As a Christian, how can we teach our kids a biblical worldview when we have a spouse who doesn't want to do that? Because for a lot of us, our spouse is not only not just not a Christian, but they believe something completely different than we do. And when it comes to our children, that can become a big problem in a marriage because one is saying, God created. The other one is saying, the Big Bang. One is saying marriage is between a man and a woman. The other is saying, it doesn't matter. What should you do? Join us today as Dr. Sean McDowell answers this question for us. How can we teach our kids a biblical worldview when our spouse is not on board with that? Watch this. All right, glad you're joining us today as we answer a short snippet from our marriage questions conference that we did a while back. Uh, we spent eight hours answering over 80 really difficult marriage questions. We brought in three really good Bible teachers, uh, Dr. Shaw McDowell, Mike Winger, and Alan Parr. Uh, they were our guest speakers for this conference. And um, this particular question, Shaw McDowell is going to answer for us, and it's this. How can we teach our kids a biblical worldview when our spouse is not even a Christian? Because honestly, that can become a very serious problem when raising children. You're trying to teach your kids about the Bible and about what God says. But your spouse is like, nope, not doing that at all. In fact, he's coming against what you're saying and teaching your children something that you know the Bible doesn't say. And you feel like you're raising your children in a divided household. Because one is saying, you know, God created everything. And then your spouse is saying, oh, the Big Bang created. One of you is, is talking about, you know, what marriage is. It's between a man and a woman. And yet the other one is saying, no, 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 that's not true. It doesn't matter. What should you do? Join us as Dr. Sean McDowell answers this really difficult question for us. Uh, how can I teach my kids a biblical worldview when my spouse is not a Christian? That's a tough one. So I love the way you said that. It's tough, but not impossible. Mm -hmm. I'd be lying to you if I said, oh, it's easy, no problem, do these three things, pass on a biblical worldview to kids. It's hard enough when both are Christians <laughs> to pass on a biblical worldview. So it's tough. Sometimes just recognizing the truth going into this, we can have expectations and move forward. So what might this look like? One, something you've heard Alan and Mike and I say a few times is, leading by example. Leading by example. So your spouse is not going to seriously consider your faith if they don't see something different in your life. And the same with your kids. Mm -hmm. If they don't look up at you and see your life being attractive, they're not going to be compelled to it. People often ask me in my own life, why are you a Christian? And one piece is I think it's true, but a huge piece is I looked at my parents' lives and I saw authenticity, I saw passion, I saw a kind of life that was attractive to me. And so it drew me to those kinds of ideas. So the first, really the biggest thing is just say, am I living a life where I'm faithful to Jesus in my priorities, in my language, in my time, that would be attractive to my son or my daughter? Model number one. Number two, build relationships with your kids. Truth is always passed on best through relationships. So spend time with your kids, do stuff with your kids. I'll sit in the jacuzzi with my older son because that's what he wants to do. My daughter wants me to come watch volleyball. My youngest son wants me to read with him. I love spending time with my kids. In fact, I'm not staying tonight because I said if I'm coming to a marriage conference, I can only be gone one night, going back to tuck my kids in and see them tonight. <laughs> So build that relationship with your kids. Third, obviously be praying for our sons and our daughters. And one specific prayer I would have is that God would bring other people into their life that can model and mentor what it means to be a Christian. I pray this for my kids all the time, is God bring in a coach, bring in a teacher, a youth pastor, a neighbor, because it's really interesting. You have like these heroes in movies and sometimes they need the mentor, the Mr. Miyagi, the Obi-Wan Kenobi, who's not a parent 
to teach the same kind of things. I needed that in my own life. So pray for your kids, but pray that God would bring in somebody specifically to play that role for them. A couple other things is all studies show that I have seen. I've done a lot of research on statistics about passing on the faith. And a more recent study by Christian Smith, who's a sociologist at the University of Notre Dame, he wrote a book called Handing Down the Faith. And he said, since the 1970s, the sociological data has been clear. Parents play the biggest role in the life of kids, more than Netflix, more than the educational system, etc. But the most effective way parents pass on their faith, number one, they have to model it, and number two, meaningful spiritual conversations in the context of relationships. Meaningful spiritual conversations. And here's just one quick example of what this might look like. And you can do this whether your kids are believers, your spouse is a believer or not. Uh, my son just turned 18 when he was, he was 14. He wanted to see this movie, Bohemian Rhapsody. And it's about the rock band. Queen. Oh, now you participate when I talk about <laughs> Queen. I get it. About the rock band Queen. And uh, I had a little bit concerns about it. But overall, I'm like, it's PG-13. And I think he's old enough to see this. So I said, hey, buddy, I'm happy to take you and a friend, pay for everything. Is when we're done, I just want to have a conversation with you. What you thought about the movie, what you saw, what you agreed with, maybe some concerns. So he goes, sure. So we go to the movie, sit back, probably 20, 30 minutes. I just asked him questions. I didn't lecture. I said, hey, what was your favorite scene? What did you think about the movie? As Christians, what can we agree with? And I said, are there any times you felt preached at? Any times you felt like the Bible would disagree with what was there? And we just talked about it meaningful spiritual conversation studies show is the best way to pass on faith. And the last thing, send your kids to Summit Ministries. <laughs> I'm not on staff mm-hmm. with Summit Ministries, but I speak for them. It's two weeks that if I could give one advice to all parents to help kids solidify their faith, it'd be send them to Summit. So in sum, lead by example, build relationships with your kids, pray for them that God would bring in others into their life, have spiritual conversations, and seriously, send your kids to Summit. Tell us about Summit. So it's for our high school, sure. college? It's for roughly 16 to 25 years old. It's two weeks. I'll go in and teach for them, and it's pretty in-depth worldview, biblical training, but there's a lot of relational, fun things they do as well. And if I could give parents one advice to pass on their faith, it really would be to send their kids to Summit. Yeah. Um, will you also go back? I, I was listening to you one time, and this always stuck in my brain. It's something you did with one of your kids. Uh, I don't know if you were at the fair and you're walking along and uh, there was a, was a Jehovah Witness or there was something? Mm. Okay, will you share that? Because that was really impactful because I think for most of us when our kids are like, oh, I want to learn about that religion, we're like, no, 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 you can't do that. But you didn't do that. Mm. To explain how you're helping your kids get a biblical worldview. That yeah, way. we were up at Hume Lake, just a beautiful camp I was speaking at for the week. And we were out on a hike, on a walk with some friends, and we were walking by this Jehovah's Witness booth. And uh, they were giving out literature like Jehovah's Witnesses do. And my son walked up, he showed interest, didn't know what it was. And a friend of mine's kids went up. And a friend of mine was kind of like, hey, don't grab that. It's, it's false literature. I told my son, I'm like, grab it. Let's talk about it. He was interested. He was intrigued. Here's a chance to talk with my kid. He had interest in what Jehovah's Witnesses believe. I'm like, grab the material. I'm not intimidated by this. And I said, open it up. What does it say about hell? What does it say about Jesus? What do we agree with? Do you see anything we disagree with? See, they believe salvation by works. So the Bible doesn't teach that. This is what we call a cult. To me, that was an opportunity to teach my kids something rather than something to shy away from. So you might think about it in more contemporary terms. I want to inoculate my kids Mm -hmm. with a vaccine, so to speak, a little bit, what you might say, of a, you know, not so much a disease, but a spiritual disease. So they develop the antibodies to be, you know, in defense of the real thing. I love that because I think that's how we're going to teach our kids, but it's, it's really hard. But not all of us are like you. Like, I'd be like, I'd, I'd probably have anxiety over that. So <laughs> that's why I need to come to Biola and you can do it. Yeah. Yeah.
hopefully that helped you. If that is your situation, hopefully Sean um, gave you some really great advice on what to do. If you would like to watch the rest of this session with Sean, he answers eight more additional questions. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can click the link below. So hope that helped. Have a really good day today. Thank you.